So, all over the news this week, you know, we had International Women's Day. Brilliant. Happy International Women's Day. And we have had the most amazing thing happening. For years, I have been going on and on and on about menopause. And for years, it has felt like a bit of a thankless task because not that many people wanted to talk about it. And now in International Women's Day, this week, suddenly menopause is everywhere. And I'm absolutely delighted. And that's what I'm gonna to talk to you about. So why am I delighted? I'm delighted for a variety of reasons. Firstly, because women's health is not dealt with effectively. And I'd like to say in this country, but I did a fabulous clubhouse talk last week with a brilliant panel and there were women from all over the world and it turns out it's not dealt with well anywhere. And I also wanna to talk to you about uh, what we can do about that and why it's really important. So let's just, let's just talk about what the issue is. So women, Go, well, it's not even about just menopause, you know, it's, a, you know, women who are experiencing PCOS, endometriosis, fertility issues, they will go to their doctor and they will, you know, uh, depending on the endometriosis, they tend to be treated with the pill, with things like uh, perimenopause, it will be, okay, well, there's HRT options. Now, the difficulty is that those HRT options or just like the pill, these are synthetic hormones and for a variety of reasons, they actually cause more problems than they cure. Now, the difficulty is that when we first go into perimenopause or in a condition like endometriosis, the issue that we have is too much estrogen. It's actually what is going on scientifically behind these issues. So menopause is defined by progesterone dropping off and our estrogen going crazy. And there is a difference between, you know, the, there's too little progesterone to too much estrogen. So later on in menopause, our estrogen drops off and then we have no estrogen. But at the beginning of, of menopause and perimenopause, it's this estrogen dominance progesterone deficiency that causes all of our symptoms. Now, the problem is when we give women an HRT that is basically estrogen, what do you think we're doing? We're causing more estrogen dominance. And that's actually, I get a lot of women coming to see me with the most awful symptoms because the HRT that they're getting from the doctor just doesn't cut it. Now, the other thing is that the progesterone that's in HRT isn't progesterone, it's called progestin. And actually a lot of GPs don't even know this. This is, you know, it, it, it's real science, go and, go and check it out. But a lot of GPs don't even know this, but it's called progestin. And it's, it doesn't even look like progesterone if you look at it chemically. It looks more like testosterone. Now the reason this is important is because when we go into menopause and we start to lose the progesterone, progesterone is our calming hormone. Now, when we don't have that calming hormone, that's when we start to get the insomnia, the mood swings, all of those things. Now, if progestin looks more like testosterone, but testosterone is not a calming hormone. You think about, you think about, you know, those teenage boys, they're not calm. Testosterone is a get up and go hormone. It's kind of an out there hormone. So all of a sudden we're taking women who have had this deficiency in this calming hormone and we are sticking them onto something that basically acts like testosterone in the body. So they end up more wired and tired. This is not good. Now, the same things happen when we put women, you know, at younger age on the pill or the marina coil or any of those things, women are ending up without the calming hormone. And the problem is that the synthetic actually stops our bodies, it puts us into a stress situation that stops our body making its own progesterone. So we end up in this massive progesterone deficiency. And then long-term women are coming into perimenopause in this really incredibly stressed state. And that then actually begets a worse menopause. So it is really exciting to me that menopause is suddenly all over the news and we're talking about it as long as the answer isn't just peddling out the same HRT because that's not actually going to help all women. Now, some women 
have a brilliant time on it and they do really well and I'm absolutely delighted for them. I tend to see the women where that's not the case and it certainly wasn't the case for me. So uh, I think one of the brilliant panelists that I worked with last week actually said, you know, what is it about being a menopausal woman that we're meant to have deep pockets? And what she meant by that was, it's really expensive to work with specialists. Now there's many different types of specialists. So there's specialist doctors who are basically gonna peddle the same HRT, maybe in a higher dose. There are specialists like me who work with things like bioidentical hormones. Now bioidentical hormones are made from um, plants, made from yam, and at a very low dose, they start topically. And there are a lot, uh, a lot of practitioners like me. Actually, that's not true. There are some practitioners like me who work with those, uh, not enough, and they're often very expensive. Um, and then at high dose, we tend to actually need to go and see specialist doctors who work with uh, bespoke compounded bioidentical hormones. So they'll actually do blood tests and, checks and check your levels and then create your hormones accordingly. And that is really quite price prohibitive for a lot of women. It can be a very expensive process. I'm not saying it's not a brilliant, brilliant process. It saved my life, but it's a very expensive process. And so this is where I have an issue because I get an awful lot of women who come and see me and, you know, that's still not, you know, uh, it's still not as cheap as seeing the doctor and a lot of women, you know, still struggle. And there is stuff that we can actually ask our GPs for. And there is actually what we call body identical hormones, which the GPs can recommend. They often don't because they sometimes don't know about it. Um, and also for them to recommend it, it's more expensive other problem is so that's actually a, a natural progesterone called eutrogestin now the other problem is that eutrogestin actually contains peanut oil and soy lecithin that's just the lecithin which is um it's what makes up cell walls but it's some people are so intolerant to soy that they can't tolerate that or they're so intolerant to peanuts that they can't tolerate it so now the only option without being on synthetics is to go to see a specialist like me or one of the specialist doctors you know that are, that are working with the really bespoke hormones. So they need deep pockets and this isn't okay. So I'm delighted we're talking about menopause and let's talk about how awfully women are treated in menopause. And the bit that really sticks in my crawl is, no, that's not the word, is it? Crawl? Yeah, sticks in, I don't know. Crawls in my throat? I don't know, there's a phrase, there's a phrase. Menopause, I can't remember. I forgot the word for broom the other day. It became standing up floor brush, brilliant. The bit that bothers me, I probably even forgot what I was going to say now. The bit that bothers me is that, uh, so I went into early menopause at 36 and I truly believe because it was all so connected to the birth trauma I had, the chronic fatigue that I had, years I spent trying to figure out what was wrong with me. And when they finally gave me the uh, diagnosis of menopause, um, that was it. There is no more, I was paying for seeing specialists on, with private medical cover. And then all of a sudden there is no private medical cover for that because you're menopausal, so go and suck it up. It is shocking the way that we treat women's issues is disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. Now I'm not blaming the GPs. They've been, or the doctors, they've been trained a certain way. Actually what's on offer is lacking. It's really, really lacking and people who know what they're talking about are really really lacking and it's uh, it's actually heartbreaking um and I see women coming into my clinic and they are in a, such a pickle like such a pickle and I'm looking at what they're telling me and I go this is really this is really obvious to me like I I see how to to work with this and actually, this is one of the reasons that we set up our college. So in our big news, uh, I know we've been talking about it for a few weeks, but you know, our big news is we have launched the College of Functional Wellness. We were originally based, you know, a kinesiology training establishment, but we realized that not everyone wants to train in kinesiology. So we have created our functional wellness coaching, which takes all of the incredible knowledge that we have on hormones, on adrenal stress, on you know everything that digestion immune blood sugars all the stuff we talk about 
and we've created a functional wellness coaching course. And I'm really passionate about training as many practitioners as we can because women need help. And not just women, you know, there are so many ways that the NHS isn't able to support chronic conditions and things like IBS and people need help. And the way that we've created our training and structured our training makes it so simple for practitioners to be able to really practically help people with diet, with the right supplementation. And I'm gonna be honest, things like black cohosh menopause work for some women, but I would say they're the women who aren't going into menopause with fried adrenals and gut microbiome issues or immune issues. They are, they're, or, or they've actually been really lucky. But the old kind of the old historical methods of dealing with menopause aren't working anymore. So I am deeply excited that we're talking about menopause. And you know, one of the big things was how women are now in a corporate setting, how the law is being changed, or not the law is being changed, but I think corporate cor there's a cry for the law to be changed. And the corporations are dealing with menopausal women differently. They're looking at different work set up. They're looking at flexible working hours. They're, they're looking at how they can support menopausal women now. And this absolutely has to happen. I mean, I was so unwell I, that I couldn't work for a few years. Like I, I was managing one day a week and the treadmill of doing the nine to five, absolutely no way I could have done it. It was horrendous absolutely horrendous and I'm, I'm getting better now uh, but you know we definitely we need to have a lot more compassion for women in the workplace uh, dealing with this situation so I think it's brilliant I think it's absolutely brilliant and I think we need to celebrate it as a huge step forward and in the celebration, we also can't be myopic and think that this is the war won, because it's not, because we have to start addressing this huge issue around women's hormones and HRT and how the one size fits all approach doesn't work for most women anymore. And how actually it's taking frontline coaches like me, like the incredible intrepid uh, explorers that I'm training. Um, and we need more, we need more because uh, people say to me, well, where can people find practitioners like you? And then they go, well, I can't really find practitioners like you. And I go, no, there aren't that many. And we need more. And it's like people say to me, oh, I couldn't learn it. Oh, I've got the brain capacity. It's like we have, we have created this training. So it's so easy to do. It's fun it you know any learning um any learning type it works for uh and so yeah we're really really passionate uh and so as part of our college we have a variety of training we obviously have the kinesiology we have the functional wellness coaching and our third practitioner training course is actually in emotional uh coaching and it's called holding space and there are three big practitioner training courses and then we have some foundation courses so we have foundation kinesiology touch for health we have foundations in coaching, we have foundations in nutrition, uh, we are just launching a foundation in business and marketing mastery. So we have these glorious uh, courses and we also have a whole load of online lectures. So I would definitely be checking out www.functional-wellness.co.uk, it's functional wellness. Um, and yeah, I'm, it's so exciting that this is now being talked about and we need more of it. So I'm gonna leave it there for today and please do jump on, ask us any questions about the training, about why the HRT isn't working for women. I mean, it'd be a great Q and A to have. Uh, the clubhouse that I did the other week was just, you know, the women were fed up because they don't know, they're not, taught and people don't know the difference between the estradiol estrogen and estriol which is our postmenopausal estrogen naturally and we need to go into this armed with the information uh, empowered to know what we're asking for and with the so many women are in fear because they start feeling awful so then knowing that we can have the courage to look elsewhere and find 
find support that doesn't cost the earth. So yeah, that's that's my absolute mission. So please continue to get involved. Uh, uh, you can, you know, we're, we're doing these lives. Find us on balancewellness.co.uk, functionalwellness.co.uk. We're also, you know, all over Instagram and Facebook and we'd love to hear from you. And that's it from me from today. I'm just gonna check I've got no questions, uh, but I will, you know, always answer any that you put in the comments below. So happy International Women's Day week and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.